Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear Fulbrighters, dear friends of Fulbright, a warm welcome to, the, to all bright minds out there on both sides of the Atlantic. My name is Hermann Agis. I'm the executive director of Fulbright Austria. And it's wonderful that you all join us today to celebrate 70 years of bright minds together with us. In 2020, we started as the celebrations. We started to celebrate the 70th anniversary of the, of the agreement, of the signing of the agreement between the Republic of Austria and the United States of America. Now in 2021, we celebrate the first academic exchange of this Fulbright program here in Austria and the United States of America. So it's the first time, 70 years ago, it was the first time that the ships crossed the Atlantic, bringing Austrian Fulbrighters to the US and US Fulbrighters to Austria. This was the start of the journey, of the journey for many of the Fulbrighters who changed their life. And this journey um, continued for 70 years now and 70 generations of Fulbrighters again had this life-changing experience, experience. Now, 70 years later, we are proud that also in this pandemic, in this global pandemic, the Fulbright program offers the opportunity to travel from the US to Austria and to, from Austria to the United States for students, teaching assistants, scholars and artists to promote mutual understanding in the United States and in Austria. This would not be possible without our stakeholders on both sides of the Atlantic. Our core funding comes from the US and the Austrian governments. And in addition to that, Institutional partners help us to enhance and expand our program. Currently, we have co-sponsored and hyphenated awards from 23 Austrians and four US institutions. With the help of our private and corporate donors, we were able to increase the travel and relocation allowances in 2019. Today, we have the honor and pleasure to have this wonderful panel discussion with our stakeholders here and or our alums here to discuss the long, long-term impact of foundation funding for the program. This event will, not, will be recorded and uh, available on YouTube. And I now hand over to Hannelore Veit, our moderator for this evening and a Fulbright alum herself. Thank you so much, Hermann. Hello and welcome, everybody. Let me just quickly tell you about my connection to Fulbright. I was a Fulbright student 1979 to 81, a long time ago at the University of Notre Dame. Um, I got my MA in American studies there. I can't say I love the Midwest, but I got an excellent education. Uh, my stay with, you know, at, at Notre Dame really broadened my horizon. America made me feel so welcome. I've made lifelong friends and I'm still in touch with quite a few of them. Did it help my career? You bet. Um, I gradually moved into journalism. Um, it took me to in the end to ORF, the Austrian Broadcasting Corporation as a news anchor and most recently as a correspondent in uh, Washington, DC. So I'm very happy to moderate this panel tonight. Uh, I'd like to welcome you all. It's quite a large panel. Um, I'd like to very briefly introduce you by name and I'd like to ask you to say one or two sentences of what your connection to Fulbright is and which university you are affiliated or universities you're affiliated with. Um, of course, Ambassador um, Catherine Walt Hall, you all know she was the US ambassador uh, in Vienna and she's also um, the founder of the Craig and Catherine Hall Foundation. Catherine? What else? Yes, and I'm good morning or good afternoon. Um, so, uh, yes, I was in Vienna. Well, while we lived in Vienna, my husband was a member of the board uh, of the Fulbright Foundation, uh, and we are connected 
luckily, with the foundation on an ongoing basis as uh, donors to our foundation. Great. Barbara Weitgruber from the Ministry of Education, Science and Research in Austria. Thank you. Well, I have the honor to be part of Fulbright Austria board for the time being, but also as director general in the Ministry of Education, Science and Research, the Austrian government contribution, which was mentioned is part of my portfolio. And uh, same as you, um, my Fulbright experience, which was in 86, 87, was actually the starting point of my future career. Thank you. Uh, Tita Mills with the US Embassy here in Vienna. Yes, good evening, everyone. Um, I am Councilor of Public Affairs at the US Embassy, and I also have the honor to serve on the Fulbright Austria board. Thank you. Um, we have some uh, Fulbright scholars and students with us. Julie Elston, she is a Fulbright scholar. Um, Julie? <laughs> Yes, hello, Julianne Elston. I'm from Oregon State University. I um, participated as a Fulbright uh, Distinguished Chair in Entrepreneurship and Innovation in 2013 in Vienna. And it looks like I'll be returning next year. Um, and I'm truly looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Isabel Garin, she is a student, uh, a grantee. Hi, yes, hello everyone. Uh, I'm a current Fulbright uh, Marshall Plan Foundation grantee, uh, and I'm conducting research at the Institute for Theoretical Computer Science at the Technical University of Graz. Okay, and we have another Fulbright scholar, Bettina Leibitzeder. Hi, I was able to do research and teach at the Department of Political Science at CUNY in New York City as Fulbright Butch Stiber, visiting professor of Austrian American studies in spring 2015. And now I have a position as a professor at the Faculty of Social Work in Landshut, that's in Bavaria. And it's quite a nice place to not to study to research, to do research and study and teach again. So I'm very glad to be able to attend this meeting today. Thank you. As you can see, it's really a large panel. We have two more representatives from foundations, Adriana Licona. I hope I got your name right. I know you told me before. <laughs> but <laughs> more Thank you, thank you. I'm, uh, hello everyone, I'm Adriana Lacona. I am the digital program officer for the Botstieber Institute for Austrian American Studies, which we can thankfully just shorten it to bias. Um, uh, we partner with Fulbright Austria to offer the Fulbright Botstieber visiting professorships, two of them actually a year. So we're very happy to do so and happy to be here today. Thank you, and we have Markus Schweiger. Yeah, hello, good evening. My name is Marco Schweiger. I'm the director of the Austrian Marshall Plan Foundation, and we are partnering with Fulbright on an, uh, as you heard uh, from one of the grantees, on a fellowship exchange program uh, in the STEM field. Thank you. And of course, Herman Agis will also stay with us during this discussion. Ambassador Hall, Catherine, I'd like to start with you. Your foundation supports Fulbright Austria. Why was it founded? Uh, why Fulbright? Uh, in which ways does your foundation um, give a, a, a benefit from, uh, from this, from, from being a partnership, mini partnership with Fulbright? Ah, in so many ways we benefit. And let's see, I'll start with uh, why did we found, our foundation is a uh, relatively small, we're a family foundation. Uh, we, the goals of our foundation are to promote democracy and uh, American exceptionalism. I know this sounds rather chauvinistic uh, in, in an international setting, but I would say in a very sort of um, American, from an American perspective, our goal was to promote what we think of as the American dream. My husband and I were beneficiaries of, of a culture and a society where we could follow our dreams where we had the basic freedoms that are so 
uh, important. Uh, and then with hard work and education, we were able to reach goals that um, were really in our dreams as young people. And so through our foundation, our hope is to promote a similar cultural and uh, and social environment for others. Um, there's obviously plenty of work we can do in this regard in back home in America. Right now in particular, I think the whole concept of democracy is very tenuous and um, needs a lot of attention. But I think uh, as you in Austria know better, I think that most people around the world, we are also connected and the uh, societies must work together to sort of promote. So being a part, which leads me to sort of, I think the next part of, of your question, and that is that to be able to be a part of the uh, Fulbright Austria program enables us to reach far beyond our, our normal connections here in, in the US now that I'm back from post and um, working principally in California and, so uh, I, um, this enables us to promote the, those, uh, those objectives. Uh, why Fulbright Austria? Because we believe so strongly in this program. Uh, part of this is, I think the, uh, it's the goals. And anytime you have a foundation when you are giving money to an entity, you wanna be sure that your goals are in line. But I think beyond that, there's also, you wanna make sure that your money is being spent properly, uh, which we have so much admiration for the, for, for the leadership and for the functions of, of Fulbright uh, through Hermann Agis. Now, uh, before that, my old friend, uh, Lonnie Johnson, um, who was such a partner for me, me when I was living in the end still um, have so much respect for. Uh, so I, I think that uh, it's just for us, it's a perfect marriage of, <laughs> of objectives, of, uh, of similar uh, sort of moral bases uh, and, uh, and a program that I'm very proud to be a part of. Thank you, Catherine. Let's look at the other side. Let's look at the side of the grantee. Uh, Julie, you've been a grantee twice. Uh, what impact did uh, your research and teaching grant have on your professional life? What did it do for you? Well, I've got to give a shout out at this point to uh, Ambassador uh, Catherine Walthall for her generous support. Um, wow, this, this program has changed my life as an academic. Um, it afforded me the opportunity to go to Vienna, work with people at VEU, uh, collect data, and I participated in a five-country study on cultural intelligence, which was recently published in the Thunderbird uh, Business uh, Review. And um, you know what a what a wonderful place to meet people and connect and to study the importance that cultural intelligence has on business behavior. Um, we, we found that it, uh, spending more than six months in a foreign country and the number of languages you speak actually improves cultural intelligence. And this means that cultural intelligence is something that can be learned and used by government and academics um, all over the world. And none of this could have been done without her support. So again, uh, thank you for, for, for your extraordinary generosity. Um, the collaborations that I've made through my work there um, will continue for the rest of my career. And um, I, I, won't even, I don't even want to go into the personal stuff. I think Vienna is probably the, the most exciting city in the world. And <laughs> I had not been there before the Fulbright. I have no idea why not. Um, it just seemed far away. And now I, I just can't get close enough. So it's a uh, it was a it was a, a, a life changing experience, and I am blessed to have had this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. I I, I totally agree. It was a life changing experience to be you know part of the Fulbright community. Um, let's talk about uh, let's talk to a student, Isabel Garen. She is a grantee of the Marshall Plan Foundation. 
Um, how did that grant allow you to follow your dreams, your aspirations abroad? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the grant has been sorry. <laughs> no worries. The grant has been really valuable for me, both um, in allowing me to kind of refine and uh, explore my career goals um, and gain kind of a new perspective in my research, and uh, just this opportunity to kind of come and explore Austria. Uh, which has been really enjoyable. Um, and also, I've really appreciated um, my grant year, 2020-2021, um, definitely posed some problems, I think, from a bureaucratic and um, grant organizing standpoint. And I've been amazed just at how the um, Fulbright program has kind of stood by me and allowed me to finally come out here. I was supposed to originally uh, make the move in October, and in February, I finally got the go-ahead. So I'm about four months into my grant uh, period right now, and it's just been really enjoyable and so interesting um, to kind of uh, explore this new area of science. I have a background in neuroscience, and I'm working currently in a theoretical computer science lab, um, and that has been really useful for me in kind of determining my uh, ultimate, uh, the ultimate focus of my um, PhD and future research. So that's been, that's been really great. Okay, uh, you are a, a Marshall Plan Foundation grantee. The representative of the Marshall Plan here is Markus Schweiger. Uh, what benefits are there in for you with, you know, partnering with, with Fulbright Austria? No, oh, that's a good question. But uh, before I start, I would like to submit also the best wishes from our president, uh, Wolfgang Petrich, who was a former Fulbrighter himself. Unfortunately, he was not able to participate today. Um, our foundation was fun founded and funded uh, on the 50th anniversary of the Marshall Plan, that was 1997. And our main aim is fostering transatlantic excellence. And so who else would be better to partner with then Fulbright Austria with this 70 years of experience and this proven track record on exchanging students between uh, Austria and the United States. And in the, uh, during our activities, we learned that it's really important, especially for US students, um, when they come in to have some connection here, to, to have some orientation here. And we are a rather small institution and therefore it was really helpful to have an institution like Fulbright who can provide this to the students. Mm -hmm. That's uh, it's, it's one reason. And the second one is also the network in the United States. We are really good, I think, at advertising our program in Austria, but we are missing the connections in the US. And therefore, Fulbright is a really good partner uh, to, uh, to advertise the, the fellowship program in the United States. A second reason is, uh, if you go back in history, I think there are some is a shared mindset and, and shared values at the beginning of the Marshall Plan and at the beginning of the Fulbright program. And that's about, Hermann Agis mentioned it before, the mutual understanding uh, for a last, long lasting peace between, especially in Europe, but between Europe and the, and the US. And therefore, uh, I think it's, it's, uh, we're, really, we're really happy to have this, this partnership. And I think it's also important, especially for a small country like Austria, to bundle the, the resources, to, to, to join the forces and to have some impact, especially in the United States. And I think that's, uh, that are really the main reasons uh, for us for this cooperation. And I hope that for more years to come, uh, we exchange students between Austria and the United States. I think Thank we you. all hope so, Marcus. Um, Barbara, Barbara Weidgruber, you were the Ministry of Education, Science and Research, the Austrian Ministry. Um, why is it important for the Austrian government to support um, academic and cultural exchange through Fulbright? Well, um, international cooperation is important um, across the world. Um, in our strategy for research, technology and innovation, which was adopted in December last year, I'm very proud to say that there is a strong focus on knowledge, on talents and skills, and on support for researchers and students um, to open up to the world and have an international outlook. And higher education institutions are asked explicitly, among others, to increase their participation in international study programs 
and Fulbright is mentioned explicitly. So even within the, the strategy of the government, the Fulbright program has a very important uh, place. And Fulbright Austria has over 20 Austrian universities, universities of applied sciences, research centers, museums, which all benefit greatly from being a partner of Fulbright Austria, but they also make considerable contributions um, to support the program's mission to foster intercultural and mutual understanding uh, between Austria and the US. Um, let's look at the US side. Of course, uh, Fulbright, um, we all know, is was, was started by, you know, um, M America after the war, by the, by the US after the war. Uh, why is Fulbright still so important for the US government? Yes, well, I, I would love to echo everything that uh, Barbara and others have said. Um, we are celebrating 70 years this year um, for Fulbright Austria. It's one of the very, very early participants in the program, which is celebrating its 75 year anniversary uh, all year. And um, the Fulbright program's mission um, is still just as valid today as it was in 1946. Um, the mutual understanding that uh, we've talked about um, before, but I think this year we're also emphasizing the importance of the longstanding relationships, the knowledge that's exchanged, and also the diversity of the participants and the kinds of programs that they participate in in Austria and uh, vice versa. Um, Austria, as I said, is very, very active and we are very pleased to, to partner and will continue to do so for as long as possible. Thank you. Herman, I'd like to bring you in at that point. When I was a Fulbright student, there were not so many foundations supporting Fulbright. Uh, how does Fulbright achieve its mission with its foundation partners? So partners and foundations are an integral part of, our, of the way we are, we are funded. Oops, I think we lost Hermann. Okay. No, I think we lost Hermann. Uh, let's see if they can reestablish the connection. Can you all here still hear me? Yes. Okay, yes. great, great, great. Um, uh, let's, oh, Hermann, are you back? Can you, can, back. can you try again? I'm sorry well, for that. I can hear you. I'm sorry for that, uh, but I think you see you know, me now and hear me. For some reason, there's, there's a bad connection today, but we, we are managed to handle that. So as I mentioned before, funding Fulbright Austria through government partner, uh, governmental partners is, is the core of our, of our program. Otherwise we would not be here. But in addition to that, partnerships with foundations and institutions help us to expand and, and enhance the program. So um, with, all, with, our, with the help of our partners, we are able to send more US scholars, more US students to Austria and to the, to the, to the United States, Austrian students and, and scholars to the United States. And thereby we increase the interaction and the friendships which build upon this, this, this journeys, these this visits. So in other words, it's, it's expanding the program. It's helped us to expand the program. And for some of the Austrian students, for example, it's the first time they interact with a US professor on campus. So therefore um, it helps to establish and increase inst um, internationalization at home as our partners mentioned also in um, the video today. So in other words, this, in, uh, internationalization, internationalization at home is a core part of what those foundations help us to build up here. And with the help of, for example, the Rosemary and David Good Foundation, we can bring artists to Austria. With the help of um, Craig and Catherine Hall Foundation, we can bring experts in entrepreneurship to, not to Austria. It's, it's helping us to bring more and more experts into the Austrian set up. And in addition to that, we have the wonderful opportunity to partner with the Boatsteber Foundation, the Boatsteber Institute of Austrian American Studies to bring scholars from Austria and from the US to, and send them across the ocean. 
for Austrian American studies. So that's a, that's a wonderful opportunity to bring two cultures together. And finally, it's not just about the scholars, the students, the young minds are really important for us. So that's why we are so happy to, to have this wonderful partnership with the Austrian Marshall Plan Foundation, because this able, enables us to bring PhD students from the fields of, of STEM, so science, technology, engineering, and mathematics into the Austrian, Austrian uh, labs and the Austrian um, uh, research facilities where they can interact with Austrian uh, students who are doing the research there. And these young, these young um, friendships which built there, they last for a lifetime. So all this is really important for us and we would not be able to do that without our partners here. So thank you, thank you for your support. Thank you, Hermann. Uh, support, of course, also comes from the Botstieber Institute, uh, Adriana Licona, uh, you are representing the Botstieber Institute. What are you getting out of it? And are there recommendations you would have for other foundations who are interested in working together with uh, Fulbright Austria? Oh my goodness. Oh, well, let me uh, talk first about how much we get out of it, the benefits. Um, uh, one, uh, we are a small US-based organization and uh, the Fulbright Austria uh, excuse me, Fulbright Austria name is Radiant. Um, so by our association with them, Fulbright really increased our own visibility and deepened our participation in the field of Austrian American studies, which is really core to us. As a US-based organization, it was interesting to hear Mark ask because we have uh, the other end of the spectrum, which is that our partnership with Fulbright really allowed us to increase our Austrian presence significantly and establish good ties with important institutions, especially universities, but I believe other organizations as well. And our scholars can be bridges in this capacity. And this is an ongoing process for us, but it's vitally important to us. Another really key um, benefit is impact. We are, again, a small organization. And what Fulbright Austria has done, it's, it's really facilitated our capacity to offer scholarships while minimizing the impact on our human resources. So we're able to make a greater impact on our funding while it doesn't really impact our human resources. So that's um, just a win-win. Um, Another form of impact uh, that's uh, really important is the diversity and critical value of the work that's being done by our scholars. Um, the, the kind of diversity of the projects that they work on, whether it's the uh, Cabaret Society in uh, Weimar, Vienna, or digital journalism, or anti-Muslim sentiment, or American music in Vienna, all this really shows the breadth and the depth of what's being done in the field. And that kind of uh, brings me to what is possibly one of the most important benefits and really why I would recommend anyone uh, partner with Fulbright. And it's because when you uh, partner with Fulbright, uh, when you work with them, you are working, you are getting absolutely talented people at every end of the spectrum, whether it's the uh, Fulbright uh, you know, alums, whether it's the current people in the program, and whether it's the staff, current or past. I didn't meet him personally, but I know Lonnie Johnson was, uh, his name is constantly spoken in our office. Um, you are getting very talented, generous people. And these pe everyone is generous in the way of wanting to contribute, really wanting to give back. And I can give an example of this in that Herman and Mitch uh, recently organized an alum reunion for us. And I can't tell you how tremendous the experience was for us to get to know the scholars, to see their faces, to hear them talk about their work and to understand the impact of the experience we don't usually get that. We see their names on paper, we see proposals, reports, all that. But to, to really hear them talk about their experience was, was really tremendous. And Herman and Mitch handled it all. I mean, it, it really felt like a gift. And then on top of that, um, 
some of the scholars who were present there have already reached out to me, one of whom is, is, has contributed a blog that I'm very excited to release next week. And it's, it's, it's when you partner with Fulbright, it's um, a synergistic partnership. You get back so much and that's why there's so many benefits and that's really why you should partner with them. Thank well, you. the scholar currently profiting from the Bots Stever Institute is Bettina, last but not least, Bettina Leibitz Eder. Uh, you were, you said, at the City University of New York. What was yes. your, your experience? What kind of connections uh, have you, did you build there professionally in, in your private life? I just want to pick up one other aspect um, Ms. Weidgruber mentioned first, and that was this aspect to broaden my horizon. I guess that was very important for me. I was studying at the smaller university in Austria in Linz, which is drawing its students and professors from the nearby regions. So going to the US was never something I thought about while I was studying. I mean, my parents didn't have that educational background. They didn't have that cultural background to take us abroad. So I was really like, the studying itself was an enablement, of course. I went abroad during my studies, but then I think this horizon which Fulbright gave me was really at CUNY with the, my professor was about how you do social sciences in the US, you have a certain idea and you, of course you ground it in your data. You just don't sum up something, but you really try to frame your idea. And that was for me, this way of, of, of broadening my professional horizon in that perspective. I was able of course to bond with the professor and also with other colleagues abroad. I was able to take in all different uh, researchers at CUNY from all different countries that would have never been possible in Linz because Linz is Linz. That's something very special to you know, New York all, and of course to the US system in comparison to more, not more rural universities in Austria, not Vienna, of course. So that was a, a very open university, a very resourceful university despite being a public university, of course. And I also think that from my perspective, it gave me more ideas. I'm, my discipline is, is, is uh, in, in this field, more ideas about the European social model in this comparison to the US model on how to socially secure citizens in the US, which was very broadening um, in, in, in that every day. Uh, having contact with it at one point or the other, and also in this perspective in the discussions, of course. Which, of course, is also a very uh, a, a discussion which uh, during the last campaign was one of the big topics. Yes. Um, thank you so much. I'd just like to throw a question, first of all, to all the grantees. What, was, what, what do you think was most rewarding uh, in your stays, either in the US or in Austria? Whoever would like to answer first, just raise your hand. Yes, uh, Isabel. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think what's been really rewarding for me so far is been kind of the widening of my network in the scientific community. Um, both, I guess, on two levels. When I first arrived, um, my- Isabel, I'll remind us what your area is, your, your yes. field of study. Yeah, I study computational neuroscience um, and I'm working currently in a computer science lab. So uh, the cohort that I am currently um, working alongside the PhD and postdoctoral students have been really welcoming and kind of a great resource in integrating into the community in Graz. Um, but I've also had uh, the wonderful opportunity to work on a project called SYNC, uh, which is an EU uh, Horizons 2020 project that is looking to construct a closed loop um, neural uh, silicon hybrid system, which is a fascinating premise. And it um, works with a number of institutions across the EU. So not only am I benefiting from the mentorship and guidance of my principal investigator in my own lab, 
Um, but I've also been able to work very closely with a professor at a lab in Italy at the University of Padua and uh, was in a meeting last week with a couple of representatives from the University, uh, the Technical University of Dresden and um, some people, some electrical engineers from a uh, company in the UK. So it's been really exciting kind of to get uh, exposure to that kind of multi-institution project and um, just a spectacular opportunity overall. Thank you, Julie, your experience, your hand is raised. Yes, um, I would like to say that probably the high point of, of my experience was the relationships I built with um, faculty members, not just at VEU, although that's an important part of it, but at many other places. Um, through the um, inter-country lecture program that Fulbright offers, I had invitations from faculty in, um, in Sweden and Italy and um, uh, England as well. Um, and they welcomed me to come and give lectures on the entrepreneurship research I was doing. And it was just like a big academic party. You know, Europe is a, is a small place. And um, people were just incredibly welcoming and were interested in my research and what courses I taught. And um, I'm in contact with many of those people still today. And I imagine uh, I will be the rest of my life since I'm doing research with some of them on new projects, but just opened up a whole new network. Um, so for me, it, it was the, the connections. Yeah, definitely the best. Yeah. Let me just throw in from my own experience. Also, it was, sure. it was a social experience. You know, it was a, from my private life. It helped so much. It was a huge group before I even went to the States. There was a huge group of Fulbright students, you American Fulbright students who were here. And we, were, we got together, you know, like every two weeks. It was a wonderful experience. We went skiing together. We did things together. It was just great, helped by the Fulbright professor at the University of Vienna back at, at um, you know, long, long, long time ago. <laughs> but really, and, and some of these connections, they just stay with you. I, I you know, go to weddings in California. Um, yes, because they are friends from my Fulbright days. Um, let me talk again. Uh, let's go back to um, the government officials we um, have here. Um, how, does, how does this third party funding add to the benefit of, 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 the, of the Fulbright program activities here in Austria, Barbara? And, and, and also would like to ask you the same question, uh, Tita. Well, um, I think the stories we just heard um, and the experience, um, the impressions we could just witness um, <laughs> clearly say it's so important to have additional funding because it's more stories, it's more people who have um, a little change in their personal lives. And having had a Fulbright myself, it was really personally, academically um, making all the difference and changing my own uh, perspectives. Um, and we just heard now also Austria being a small country, but geographically located um, within the European Union, it's the transatlantic cooperation, not just between Austria and the US, but it's the European Union. Um, it's a wider Europe, um, which is reflected in a lot of the statements. Um, and therefore, I think it, it's cultural empathy, long lasting relationships, as we heard. And of course, it's in times of uh, crisis and, and the pandemic, we just um, witness and are still um, experiencing. International cooperation is so important and, and knowing how to work together. Um, and we saw um, in the development of the vaccines, how important it was that there were all these connections and, and some of the Austrian researchers actually do great work now in the US um, in, in the field of, of COVID-19 pandemic um, and, the, and the same here. Um, so I, I think um, if people need to be convinced, um, they should just go back then to the recorded um, session uh, and listen to it over and over again. And um, I think uh, what we do from the ministry and we did it twice already, uh, we have a dedicated budget of 150,000 euro uh, to double third party donations received in Austria because we do not have a culture to, of a, a tradition of fundraising in Austria. So we think it helps to have this special incentive. Tita. Yes, thank you, Barbara. Um, US government funding, uh, which comes through the generosity of US taxpayers is key, of course, as well as 
um, the huge contributions uh, from the government of Austria and the people of Austria, uh, but private foundations and other um, support is just tremendously important. And um, with the generous contributions that, uh, that we enjoy here with the Binational uh, Fulbright Commission, Austria is one of the top 10 US uh, destinations uh, for U.S. Fulbright scholars, so I'm very proud of that. Um, but I would just say that you know the the contributions, um, both direct and indirect, of uh, all of the people that uh, make Fulbright possible, we can simply do more with the additional funding that comes. So it really does make a, a huge, huge difference, and I'm very grateful for it. Thank you. Oh, former ambassador, of course, I've seen you nodding a lot throughout this discussion. Um, talk to us about your, what is your personal experience with Fulbright grantees? What, what, what makes it personally rewarding for you? Oh my, <laughs> thank you for that question. Um, as I uh, watch and listen to Julie uh, today, I am thinking about how proud I am to be associated with Fulbright because as a, someone who wants to support Fulbright uh, from a personal perspective, um, she, for example, um, the, the sort of the legs, the multiplication factor of our donation is many, it is increased many fold. I mean, it's not just uh, all the folks that Julie uh, works with at VU, but also just uh, all the people, all the students she will come in contact with over the course of her career. I just, it's very exciting to think about how we can uh, sort of go so much further in what we hope to do. I, I mean, I'll just, let me say, I referenced it a little bit earlier, but democracy and, um, and principled entrepreneurship that is enabled by democracy are such in such a tenuous state, I think, around the world. And so what we can do to promote uh, people who will message the, um, the importance of, of the principles that we want to support, we by, I mean, us at the foundation, but everyone associated with Fulbright is really very, very exciting. Uh, let me just ask the grantees again. Uh, I mean, I think we all loved our experiences, our Fulbright experiences. Were there obstacles that you had to overcome? Was it always easy? What, what, what made you decide um, for the Austrians, which, uh, or for, for the Americans, which country to go to? Because as a Fulbright scholar, you know, you can choose a lot of countries. <laughs> Let me see if somebody has something to say there. It's hard to see with. It's, it, yes, Isabel. I can go ahead and speak to that. Um, yeah, I was always gonna come to Austria. It, um, my move or my application to this program was kind of uh, born from a pre-existing relationship between the lab I'm currently working at and the one I worked at um, undergraduate in school. Um, so I was always going to come to Austria, but there were, of course, some obstacles to my move here. Um, I moved back in February, so of course there was quite a bit. Um, everything was kind of closed down and I was very worried about kind of establishing myself in a new country um, <laughs> with uh, no real way to get out and meet people or interact with others. But I was actually shocked at how easy the transition was just, um, even though a lot of my initial relationships with my other um, fellow Fulbrighters and with my coworkers were over Zoom, I was really impressed by um, kind of how welcoming the country was, so. Well, I had the same experience in the United States, you know, I arrived and I felt at home, which, <laughs> which I can't say about every, every country. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to ask um, Marcus and Adriana about their relationships with uh, grantees, with Fulbright grantees. What do you find rewarding in those relationships? I mean, that's coming from the Botsteber, the Represent, representative of the Bodsteber Institution Institute and 
um, and the Marshall Plan Foundation. Um, if I may, I mean, the one, um, the primary thing that stands out for me is, um, actually I should say two things, is not only the critical depth of the work that they do, um, it's uh, with, with the, the amazing thinking and, uh, and creativity that is involved in the work that they do, but also their willingness to share it with others to contribute back to um, bias to you know share it on our, our uh, website uh, to communicate with us um, and um, so for for us it's really about their generosity and yet yeah, their talent at the same time marcus yeah i think i have to, to steal the fulbright slogan i'm always <laughs> curious to see just really pride minds uh, doing such interesting work and research. And uh, a lot of the, the, the people in the discussion already mentioned it. It's also about the networks and not only the networks between the people, but they establish also networks between institutions uh, that are long lasting networks. So, as Isabel said, between uh, one research group and another one, and maybe they send another researcher in the other direction. And I think in some, some kind they are all some kind of ambassadors uh, for, for the scientific field, but also for the, the universities and their home countries. I'm, I'm trying to see if we have any questions because it's we're getting to the point where we should invite uh, people from outside to ask their questions. If you do have questions, um, please uh, write them in the Q&A um, function. I see one comment here by uh, Robert Glenn Elkin. I chose an interesting comment. I think I chose Austria 1992-93 because the top researcher in my field was located at the Bayer Center and University of Vienna. That I find very interesting because usually it's the other way around. <laughs> People go to the U.S. because uh, research and top uh, researchers are at U.S. universities. So glad to hear that it's working or to see that it's working the other way, the other way around too. Um, do we have any questions? It, uh, let me just check in here. Uh, not for the moment. Herman, what, uh, you have been with Fulbright two, three years now, if I remember correctly. Uh, what makes it, what, what is the most rewarding thing for you? Oh, I think Herman is frozen again. <laughs> Let's see. I'm back again. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. So one thing you see is that a digital connection cannot replace a personal relationship. Yes. Yeah? <laughs> so that's 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 I think the magic uh, the Fulbright program has. It brings together people not just via Zoom or just via uh, a digital mean. It's not just about uh, seeing someone on a screen. It's you, you really, as a Fulbright, you travel to the other country and the other country becomes your home, your new home. And coming then back, back to your old home, you have two homes. And I think that's the, with this kind of two homes you have in your heart, you, can, you then continue to, to continue your Fulbright journey. And when I look back at, at my first orientation here, or uh, yeah, it was, it was the first orientation year I had with the students. We had one professor from Austria, from the VU, who joined in um, to give an overview about, um, about um, economics and, and sustainability. And she just studied that field because she met a Fulbright scholar in her undergrad study. So this was the first, uh, my, the, my first in the action, so to say, with, um, with the full product experience that it's, it's, it, it changes the life, not just of the person who's moving, it changes the life of the people he meets or she meets in his or her new home. And then she comes back, he comes back to his home country and with two homes in his heart and many people 
many new friends in his mind, in her mind. So that's what I, what's my personal takeaway. I admire everybody who had this football experience. And that's why we and the entire team here work on that to create these opportunities also for the next generations of Fulbrighters. And this is, if you look at my camera flicking this and, and, and my internet connection today not being perfect, this highlights why it's important to be in person in the other country. <laughs> Yes, I, I, I totally agree with what you say. You know, I, um, after my studies, I went uh, back to Austria. Of course, you have to go back to Austria after your Fulbright studies. Uh, then I moved on to Tokyo. Then I came back to Austria and worked here forever. But I always, always had at the back of my mind, at the back of my mind, I want to go back to, to the United States. I want to go there as US correspondent, which I did. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's just it was it's the Fulbright experience that put it in my my head you know it's it's my it's my second home I must say that um okay um do we have any other questions people raising their hands would like to make a comment I, I realize this is very difficult a, a discussion as you say Herman a discussion in person is so much nicer with all the nonverbal communication going on and no delay and you know exactly what other people that want to add or who wants to add something um, I think we have all been you know praising Fulbright and all the cooperation between Fulbright and foundations and the governments, of course, for the past uh, 50 minutes or so. I would like to thank the panelists here. Thank you very much for being with us uh, this evening, or uh, it's the middle of the day for some of you over there in the States. Uh, and I would like to, you know, pass the baton, like Mitch said, pass the baton on to Herman for his final words. Thank you. And it's good that the connection continues to be uh, working for these final remarks. Um, I just, before, before I start with the closing, I would like to highlight that this is not just an anniversary year for Fulbright Austria. It's also an anniversary year for the partnerships we have. So we are proud that the Craig and Catherine Hall Foundation to this year uh, celebrates with us the 20th anniversary of the signing of the agreement and the same is true for our uh, partnership with the Boatstipper Institute of Austrian American Studies. So this is impressive and we are so lucky that this uh, partnership continues and all our grantees will be, uh, will be really benefiting from that also in the future uh, as we see that. And with that, all of you highlighted why it's important to have these, these partnerships these long lasting partnerships, which many of them are more than 20 years now. And I would like to, to extend a sincere thanks to all the panelists, um, especially also to Hannelore Veit for managing and moderating today. With, um, out you, without you, our internet connection might be totally lost here, but you managed to have to make this event a very, very special event for everybody. And without all these partners, as I mentioned, we would not be able to have to do what we as Fulbright Commission do for now over 70 years uh, to promote mutual understanding. And a special thanks I want, would like to extend to uh, Mitch Sims, who was organizing the event and handled all the technical issues in the background. He could not save my connection, but he saved so many other connections here today. Um, I also would like to um, clearly state that such celebrations would not be possible without the wonderful support of the entire Fulbright Austria team, which is working in the background to make this, this event possible. And especially thanks to Doné and Sophie who are handling currently GatherTown so that through, through our GatherTown platform, people were able to watch this event as well. So, I thank all the program officers uh, in the football office, Dara Lustig, Donne Johnson, Francisca Brunner, Sophie Thiel, who on a daily basis, on a daily, in the daily business, manage all the grant the grants as well as help the grantees to come to Austria. Without them, it would not be possible that you are here and that these partnerships, partnerships are continuing. 
uh, and Karin Schachtner in the office is managing us to make sure that we can do what we should do. So with this, and then and I thank the entire Food but Austria team. And I thank uh, all the board members and team members from the past and present, because as we hear, 70 years are a long time. And um, the former executive director, Lonnie Johnson, extended this network of partnerships over the past par more than 20 years. And we are still, still building on what, what was established at that time. So with this, thank you. We will not be able to promote mutual understanding without everybody in, in, this, in this network. And it showcases why we all need to work together to bring more peace, knowledge, and empathy into this world. So we hope with the, uh, with the support and donations from all our, co our community members, we are able to create these opportunities also for the next 70 years of Bright Mind generations. Thank you. Thank you, Herman. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>